One of the foundational skills that I've learned before I developed any software was the ability to locate the last row, last column, or the last used cell in any data set. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and today for our VBA for Beginners series, I'm going to share with you how to extract the last row, or last column, or even the last cell within a range, or within a sheet, or a column, or a row. All right, I cannot wait, so let's get started on this quick training. I've got a list of data here, and I need to know the last row of this particular column, or maybe I need to know the last column of the data. What if I have different data sets, or what if they're inconsistent data? We're going to go over all the rules. In fact, I've got a cheat sheet here for you that's going to help you do that. And you can download this. In fact, it's absolutely free. This little tutorial that we're going to go over, as with everyone, go ahead and click the link down below. And I'll make sure to get this little cheat sheet with all the code that we're going to go over. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification icon bell. Okay, so what I really want to do is if I've got some data here, I need to determine the last row of data. Now, why is that important? Sometimes we need to run advanced filters. Sometimes we need to copy data within sheets, or sometimes we need to manipulate data. And sometimes we also need to run four next loops, and we need to determine the last row of data. As our data grows or shrinks, the last row will change. So we need to extract that row into a variable. Sometimes it's a column, and sometimes we don't necessarily know which column we're going to be using. So I'm going to help you out and give you some great code tips that you can take with you in any application. And if you're new to creating applications, or if you've been doing it a little bit and want to expand your knowledge, this is a great quick training for you. So let's get into the code. Now, to get into the code, I've got some sample code. We're gonna go into the developer, and then we're gonna go to Visual Basic. You can use Alt F11 to open the Visual Basic editor. If you don't have this developer, you can right click on any of the tabs up here and just click Customize Ribbon, and then select the Developers tab right here. All right, so we're gonna go to the developers. Alt F11 or Visual Basic will get us in there, and I've got some information here that's going to help us. So this is the workbook that we're working on. We're going to have the last row and columns here. And I'm going to be working within an individual module. Now, all I did was insert a module here. And then I added some code. That code we're going to be going over inside here. The first thing what I would like to do is I want to find the last used row in a single column. And that means the last row of data. Now, often in the data that we work with, we have one data that is required. For example, if we have an ID here or something that's required, if I know that the transaction names are always required, all I need to do is look up column A of this and then just check the last row. And we can do that very easily in a small macro. So the first one that we're gonna go over in this cheat sheet is called the last used row in a single column. And you can use a column number or we can use a column A. So we can use one with the letter and one with the number. So let's take a look at the full macro. This is a little bit of a cheat sheet and to see how we would do that. Okay, so back into the VBA editor we go. Now, here's our first one that we're gonna be going over, finding the last used row in a single column. So I wanna look at a single column here. We're gonna use column A, and I wanna know the last row of data in that column. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this macro here called find last row in a single column. We're gonna dimension the last row as a long variable as long because it's the whole number that we're looking for. Then we need to define what is in that last row. We're gonna call out the sheet. This sheet's called data. It's not required. However, if we just use cells, it's gonna be whatever active sheet we're on. So I always recommend using the sheet name. And this sheet name has two different names. In fact, if I were gonna call this data set, I always like to use the code name. This is the sheet name. So if I were to change this, I want to make sure that code still works. So to do that, I'm going to use the code name, which is data. Now to change the code name, we would go into the properties here and that's gonna launch here and we see the properties here and this is our sheet code name right here. So this only changes through VBA. So it's always a good idea to use this code name within the code, which is exactly what we did. It's also shorter too. So data is our sheet. We're gonna use the cells. And what I wanna do is I wanna determine all of the rows. When we use cells, the first one's always your row and the second one is always your column. So we're using the first column here. Now, if we're gonna use F8, and we go ahead and step through this, we're gonna see that the last row starts out as zero. Now, the rows count is all the rows in your worksheet, and it's column one. And we're gonna use end, we wanna look for the end, and we're gonna use X, L up. Now, X, L up is gonna go all the way down and look up at the next available row. 
and we want to extract the row. So the row is what we want on the last row of data. And so what that's going to do is if we tab through this, we see that the last row is 31. And then we have a message box, the last used row is 31. Okay, great. So we see that, but let's go ahead and comment this out. And I want to show you another way to do that. And we're going to uncomment this out. Another way to do that is using the column letter. So I'm giving you two options here. So as we step through this code again, we're using the last row, the same sheet data. This time we're focused on column A. We're using the range object in this. Here we use the cells object, and you can use whichever one you prefer. I prefer to use this one because I know if when we get into the later columns, I don't always know if column 10 is J or whatever. I don't know it, but looking at this, it's oh, it's much easier to visualize exactly what column. So I prefer this method. Rows count and XL up dot row. So this is the column letters. Again, this is using all the rows in your worksheet, count up, and that's good. And then we'll get the last used row as 31. Okay, now that's great if you want to look in a single column, but what if you have ranges like this? See if we have transactions. We can't use all the rows here. So let's take a quick look at this sample right here. Up on the left, I really want the last row in the given range. So what if it's all the way up to here? Or what if it's here? I don't want to use all the columns. I want to extract this number, row 11. So how do I do that? Well, let's say the last possible row is 18. So we can do that in column L. So how would I do that? Well, we can update this code. So I'm going to change this to L18. So L18. And what that's going to do, it's going to look in column L18, and it's going to look up to the next available row. And it's going to give us that row, which is row 11. So that's how we're going to do it in this case. So that means very limited. So let's take a look. Let's walk through that. And then we're going to see using F8. And then we're going to go down. Now we see that the last row here is now 11. So perfect. So it's got us the last row because it's looking from 18 all the way up to with the next row of the value. And it's going to return 11. If we were to use anything below that, we could use any row below the next row. So that means if you have two data sets in the same column and you want to return the last row, perhaps on the first data set, we can use the last possible row of data. So keep that in mind, that can be very helpful as well. Okay, very good, I'll return that to the way it was, so that I'll leave these samples for you. Okay, let's continue on to the next one. Next up, I'm gonna use finding the last used column in a single row. So we're gonna dimension the last column as long. And this time I wanna use row two because there's no merge cells. So I'm gonna take a look at that row two. I wanna find the last column, which is column O. Now, if I wanna get that into a column number, I can use equals column and 15 is the one we want to return. So 15 is what we were looking for. So to do that, we use row two, columns count, or counting all the columns, and to the left, and we want to extract the column. So basically, it's going to go all the way to the end. It's going to look to the left here, and it's going to find this value, and it's going to return the column of that. So let's step through the code and take a look at that. So we're going to use F8, and we're going to go through the last column equals 15. So the columns count, we're going to go n to the left and we want to return the column and the message box the last column is 15. okay very good well that's nice if i know exactly what row or i know exactly what column but what if i have a range of data here and i want to determine the last row but i'm not sure exactly what column to look at because there might be some missing data so i don't want to look at column a because it's going to return 30. i'm not sure which column has the last data. So I want to look at the range entirely and determine the last row based on the last data inside any one of those columns. So how would I do that? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the last used row within a range. So we have a range of data. And again, dimension the last row is long. And we're going to determine the last row, again, using our sheet. But now we have a range of data. So we're going to use range. And we're going to use A1 through D99. This could be any row. So it could be just a large row. It's not that important. It just make sure it's beyond your data capacity, right? So you could use any range. But let's say I have a large range here. And I want to find the last row. So to do that, we're going to use the find command. The find is very important. What are we looking for? Well, we're going to look for any data, and that's signified by the asterisk, which is the wildcard, which means any data at all, any non-blank cell. And we're going to run a search by rows. So I'm looking for rows, and I want to give it a search direction. Now, what is that search direction? It's previous, so I want to go all the way down, just like we did before, looking all the way up, and we're looking within that range. I'm looking row by row. And I'm looking for that last row with the data. And once it's found, any row that contains data, it's going to return something. And what's it going to return? It's going to return the row number. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So if I, again, use F8 and walk through this, we see that the last row is 31. So it looked at all this data. 
it looked at the search rows it looked at the directions it extracted the row and it's returning that row okay and the last row is 31. so we see how we can get the last row of data within a range but what if we want to focus on a column what if i want to find the last used column in a range well that's going to be next up very very similar again we're going to mention the last column is long our data range is the same a1 through d we'll use this original data so our last column is four but i want to get that Again, we're using a large data set here. We're looking for anything with values. It could be anything like a space. As long as it's a non-blank, that wildcard is going to be used to look for anything. This time we're searching by columns. So it's the N, D, and I'm going back. We could change this to a larger, even if we change this to E or F or G, that's going to be fine because we're looking for the last column. And we're looking for previous. So it's column, this one, this one, this one. It's moving in that direction as it's looking for what? It's looking for the column. That's what it's going to return. Search orders by columns, and we want it to return the first column that it sees, which is the last column with data. Again, so if we run through this using our F8, it's going to determine the last column as four, which is column D. So the last column is four. That's great. So we have that. But what if I want to find the last used set? in a range. In this case, the last cell is D31 because the last column is D. The last row is 31. So I want to determine what that is in case I want to select all or I want to copy the range. That might be important to determine the entire range. If I know the starting point, what is the ending point of that range? Very important to get that last cell. So how would we do that? Well, again, we can dimension the last row is long and the last column is long. We're going to be looking for two different variables. We're simply combining what we did before. Using our data range here, we're using the find command. This is going to be for the last row. I'm looking for anything with a value. I'm looking in part, we can use part or whole. Search order by rows. Here's some additional commands that may or may not be helpful to you. You can keep these minimal commands or you could expand it, but this time we want to focus on rows. We're looking by rows and the search direction is previous and we want to extract the row. So the search by rows and row is very important. So those are the important things along with looking for anything. So finding what we're looking for, how are we searching and what are we extracting in the direction that we're going in. So that's going to get us, of course, our last row. Next up, I want the last column. Almost very, very similar, except this time our search order is by columns. Our search direction is also previous, and I want to extract the column so that I've got the last row and the last column. When I combine those inside our sheet, taking our data sheet, our cells property, that object, which is the row comma the column. When I extract the address, it's going to give us the address of that. So again, let's go ahead and use F8 through this. As we move through the last row, it's going to be 31. The last column is going to be four. We're now going to take that and convert it to using this, and it's going to return the cell address of D31. And that's great. So we could then take that, we could do an advanced filter, or we could copy the data to a new sheet. There's a lot of things we can do with it once we know the range. Okay, very good. So that's going to be very helpful. Next up, what I want to do is actually our last macro that we're going to go over, and that is to find the last used cell in a worksheet. We're not sure what our range is. We want to look at the entire worksheet. So we can do that as well. We're going to dimension the last row and the last column both as long. This time, we're not going to be specifying a range. We're going to use the cells property. That means the entire sheet. All of the cells within this worksheet we're going to be looking at. Again, we're finding, we're going to look in the part, search order by rows, search direction previous and rows. So this is going to get us the last row within the entire sheet. Also for our purposes is 31 here. Next up, I want the last column, but this time the last column, again, we're using the cells property. Very important for that for the entire worksheet. Again, we're looking for anything. We're looking by columns, search direction, and we're going to extract the column. So we've extracted the last used column and the last used row. Once we have both that information, we're going to take that and we're going to combine them using the cells property data cells i want to return the address of that particular row and that particular column and to do that again just like we did before using f8 we're going to go the last row is 33 in this case the reason is because i've added this 15 right here so down there we see that and also we see that the last column is column o here which is also known as column 15 and so we've moved it on so now we see that the last column is 033 which is this one right here 
033, exactly. So that's right. So in this training, we saw that we were able to get the last row in a single column using either the column variable, or we could use the column string here, which is the column number or the column letter. And also we were able to get the last column in a single row using the last column and to left. We we're also be able to get the last use row within a given range using the row and the find command. Also the last column in a range, which is very helpful. We're extracting that column, searching by columns using also the find. The last used cell in a given range, so that was helpful. And also the last used cell in a worksheet. All right, very good. I hope this training has helped you. If you do like this training, I've got an incredible VBA course from Daniel Strong, my mentor, who will teach you everything you need to know in a comprehensive VBA course. That's available through the links below. Daniel is a great mentor of mine. He taught me a lot about VBA. Also, don't forget to pick up this cheat sheet. And also I have a VBA code product, which is the ultimate developer's library. I've got 500 searchable macros in this thing. It's really awesome. So once you're able to grab these, you can then copy them and paste them into your workbook. You can search for them. You can do anything you want. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the ultimate developers VBA library, even code for Mac, Outlook integration, emails, contacts, you name it. So I've got that available below too. Thanks again for your continued support and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.